Hello and welcome RC Shim on the field. Really? <laughs> RC Shim on the field. Because it's like 6 degrees Celsius, I'm inside the car. Being inside the car for my antenna test today will also reduce the range, but have the same conditions for antennas, this should be okay. I fly 25 milliwatt with the DJI HD FPV system and just try different antennas. For my first test, I want to fly with those lollipops up there and the shield down there. I measured that these two antennas on the bottom only receive and those transmit as well. They receive and transmit. The top left antenna, for example, is around 80 milliwatts of transmission power. I note this here and I try to figure out for you which antennas actually transmit and receive and which antennas are for receive only. Series, the top two are transmitting as well, while the bottom ones are only receiving. We will see this. I'm at channel 5, which is around 5.8 and this is set to 5.8 as well. So should be fairly accurate. The right bottom antenna on channel 5, it's not even transmitting one milliwatt. So the bottom left, I really only see like two or three milliwatts. Maybe that's just if they are under power and don't transmit anything. But it looks like it's correct. The top ones are transmitting and receiving and the bottom ones are only receiving. So just fly first with these, then with the stock and then with another fancy setup. The building over there is around two to three hundred meters and it's always a bit of a weird uh, situation uh, RF wise over there. It's reflections from the wall and also as you see it's a high humidity in the air. seen it already, it's the rampage frame, here is the DJI air unit and I just happen to have these lollipops with MMCX connectors lying around. I'd say it's a pretty good spot to have those antennas up there. Maybe I already showed you my Excel charts where I try to compare those flights. Because the SRT files that are being recorded on the goggles, they also lock the, the bitrate, which is the indicator for good video signal. Maybe we see the difference here and can just say which antenna is really the best in the practical application here. Stock antennas on the right and the better antennas on the left. And in the Excel chart on the bottom, you see a red cursor moving, which corresponds to where the copter is. And you see the blue line is the bitrate. If it's up, it's good. If it's down, it's bad. And those orange spikes are the landmarks to sync up my video. The image doesn't look terrible. 17. But I might want to bail out with this antenna setup sooner than with the other. Ah, it's definitely worse here. Oh, the shit. It's literally shit. Don't get me wrong. Okay, that's that's quite blocky all the time here. And was definitely better with the other antennas. In front of me, of course. Now passing me. And this is where the patch antennas on the last run had no advantage. And here it's kinda okay. But I see the red symbol already again. 16. Yeah, now I'm looking at the um, bitrate. It's at 16, 8, 12, 10, making me nervous. 11, 10. Okay, 8, 10. I think it should go better now, yeah. So it's definitely noticeable an um, advantage to fly with the patch antennas, even to the side or behind. So maybe it was more the advantage of those lollipops on top of my goggles rather than the patches <laughs> yep 
you are in this confined test here in this range uh, I would say the other antennas are about double the, the range uh, the stock ones are only half as good to put it that way it's a bit scary to fly with the blocky um, footage but so far I didn't have any any real issues I mean that's analog quality now so to say but still great let's try to fly over this over this construction thing here a bit that's where I got really bad quality with the patches oh now the truck comes again okay in my theory this should be a pretty good combination it's just a bit impractical you have to assemble and disassemble all the antennas all the time but yeah they are all on right polarization as the copter is so let's see how this works once again from inside the car and maybe after this flight I will try to stand outside and see how much better the signal is when not in a Faraday cage. On the stock antennas here is where I got the first red channel 5 thingy. Still good here. Increasing the pace a bit. Ah, very solid image quality. No problems at all. Here I see a, the trees were a bit blocky. And here I see the first red marks of channel 5, but still 25. Bit rate. Bit rate still up there. And now in focus mode, as Demon says, focus mode can also occur if you need too much bitrate because too much grass is moving below you. Passing the car. I really hope I can sync up the flights well in comparison, but of course I will compare them in Excel. Should be good there. Yeah, everything above 20, 25.3. So it's really an advantage to fly. Ah, now we're, we're at 18, 17, 20, 25. So on the far edge here of the field. Yeah, but it's definitely an improvement which was to be expected which still is to be expected get the times right so trying to fly the same path I see a bit of cello sorry about there about cello being there so now let's fly over the shit this is where focus mode kicks in again. Ah, a bit, a bit blocky. Yeah. So once more, I try to fly over, over these bushes here. That's where I really had issues with the with the patches on the patch run. When I went down here far. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was a bit ugly here, you see? Oh, it takes a lot of time to recover. Still a two megabit. Ah uh, what's up? Now I'm kinda happy that I'm in the 
in the stabilized mode. It's not a bad idea to fly in stabilized mode. What was up there? I had two ambit and only a screen show. Okay, just chilling a bit now. Well, maybe I can film our Sishim at work a bit. Okay, so as you've seen, it wasn't really good to fly behind there. It's not far, but it was down to 2 Mbit and it took a long time to recover, which is very ugly to fly with. Uh, it was cool that I was in stabilized mode because it more or less yeah, stabilized itself. So I will once more fly while I'm outside because it's not as cold as I thought. The thing that I don't like about this setup is that those long antennas are not practical. Okay, from here on it's all outside the car, 25 milliwatts, different antennas. And since I don't want this video to be super long, I will keep it short and only show you fractions of these flights and compare and rather compare the four Excel charts them for you and kind of tell you my ideas about the antennas. On the Excel charts, please note those orange spikes, which are my milestones. The first two being around the building. The third, the, the center one, is the, maybe an important one as well. It's all the way behind my back and also behind the patches. So patches struggle here naturally. The fourth marker is on the far edge of the field, but within the patches. The fifth mark again, the pile of shit over there, and the sixth mark is a special mark because it is where I fly behind metal structures over this construction slash scrapyard thingy. Okay, so now let's try this. That's a compromise. That's small patches. That's a really good, happy, crazy extreme cross hair here, and two stubby lollipops on top. They can stay there forever of course in terms of backpack friendliness now the video aerial systems crosshair and the menace patch accompanied by the two stubbies on top this proved to be uh, the chart with the most consistent bitrate being at 25 so you could say this is the winner but as you will see later, I am more tend to use the shield antennas, which can stay on there. But you might want to consider getting crosshairs. They, at least here, the numbers, they look pretty fine. Okay, away from all the fancy antennas, just using the good old Immersion 8 DBI patch and the Menace RC patch down as patches here and the stub is on top. This could stay there, I suppose. Let's see how this works. Now that's almost the same antenna configuration as in the last flight. I only swapped out the crosshair for the old Immersion 8 DBI patch and it looks slightly worse than the, the winner. <laughs> So it is okay, two patches below, and two stubbies above. Yeah. But now let's head on to the last flight and see how this works. So from uh, usability and also from the looks perspective, I think this should be my setup and I will fly once again with this. Okay, so this is the dual shield on the bottom and two stubbies on top. And I see a fair amount of breakup here, especially in the center where I'm all behind the patches. So you could say if you are flying in the direction of the patches, it should be good. But it's not such a nice all around coverage, which is kind of weird finding because the other antennas were directional antennas and they seem to work pretty well behind themselves as well. Or it's just a variance in my measurements. Sorry for this, if this is the case. Okay, so there you have it. Those are the four Excel charts. As I said, the one with the crosshair performed kind of the best. The other patches are not too bad as well. The one with the long sticking out 
omni antennas all the way on the bottom didn't give me that much of an advantage compared to the stubbies so I'm glad that I don't have to use those long antennas there kinda impressed really with the stubbies there and as I said my preference might be the top one even if it not performs the best but I can just throw it in my backpack and, and fly faster with it just keep in mind you gotta be in front of your goggles to have good reception in the end I might decide not to take the best antennas but the most convenient to use antennas and by convenient to use I mean this here as I said the dual shields also in my in my decibel readout antenna test on analog I didn't find that they work the best but with their ability to be velcroed to the front here and the orientation is good I think this wraps it up hope you learned uh, something today which antennas to get I mean there are other more fancy antennas like the IB Crazy what's it called the, the big fat white thing with four antennas inside it uh, that's for sure a fancy thing but you have to unmount and mount it all the times as well but the dual shield and the stuff is I think they work fine for me as always, thanks a lot for watching, hope you liked my video, let me know in the comments what you would do differently, what are your experiences with the DJI system, uh, are you happy with it, I'm quite happy with it, so thanks a lot for watching, see you next time, bye for now. <laughs>